Praise the Lord. The story of our life. I'd like to tell this story at least once a year. It's a story of the prodigal son, and and when we reflect on our own lives, we can we can uh, realize that we've been down this same path, every one of us, because uh, the Bible teaches us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we've made our mistakes. You know, we've we've had some rough times in life, uh, but thank God that things work out in the end. Huh? <laughs> God is so merciful and kind to us. I'm not sure if we have this on on video, so. I hope that today, if you're watching my video, that this will touch your heart. And if, if you stray away from the Lord, He is looking for you. He wants you to come back home. So please take heart in, in this message. If you have your Bibles with you today, turn with me to Luke chapter 16 and verse 11. I'm going to read the whole, whole story and then we'll come back to it. Then he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, Give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the young son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your higher servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Wow. You know, as we come into this world, we... Uh, we have so much in front of us, you know, so many possibilities, so many opportunities. And uh, we start to like, like Heidi with her career right in front of her, you know, it's a good example. She's thinking about where to apply for jobs and things like that. And, and all the people, the little kids that she'll be able to impact in this world, you know. It's, a, it's amazing to plan for futures like that. And then uh, uh, what uh, Adriana talking about Texas Tech, you know, a lot of great things, you know. And we can reflect back and remember back when we were starting out, you know, and we we're in our dreams and in our visions for the future, you know, and then and then here God gets involved and brings blessings into our lives. And next thing you know, we got family and, and friends and fellowships and jobs, careers and so many things going on, you know, and we really should be grateful to our God. Because remember back, if you remember back far enough, there was a time that we almost blew it. There was a time that sin was dominating our life. And we were about to blow our future. God had told us, I have a, a plan for you. I've, I've got a future for you. It's good for you. It's a good thing. But we decided on our own. We're going to try it without Him. We're going to try to make this thing happen without God. You know? And many of us, we took, took a hearty attempt at trying to build our own life without Him. And then ended up in failure, frustration, heartaches, pains, and suffering. You know? And we're kind of like this young guy here, you know. He's, uh, he's raised in a pretty good family, it looks like. His father is wealthy, he has servants. And the father is very generous and kind. The son comes, and before it's time, you know, for the, for the inheritance to be handed out, the son asks, hey, why don't you give us the inheritance now before you die? <laughs> Yeah, 
That's not the way it works, you know. Here it just comes after. Remember the, the will, you read that? But the son had the nerve <laughs> to come and ask the father, that, give me my, the inheritance now and so I can use it now, you know. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to go invest it and I'm going to build this great life. Father, so give me that opportunity now, you know. Maybe that's the way it happened, you know. Maybe the, the boy did have a dream and a vision. Maybe he did. Maybe he was going to build a, a good life, you know. But when he got out there with a pocket full of money, he said, wow, I think I'll just have a little fun first, you know. And that fun turned into a big, giant mess. He took everything his dad had worked for all them years, building up for their children's future, you know, hoping to give them a good start in life, you know. And, and he took all that money, and, and the brother said he wasted it on harlots and carousing and drinking and partying. He wasted his father's livelihood, you know. And uh, everything went bad. The money runs out, and then what happens? No friends. Got plenty of friends when you got plenty of money, right? <laughs> yeah, buying drinks and everybody. Yeah, he's, he's got all kinds of friends. But the money runs out, and he's in a desperate, desperate situation now. Now, we've all been there. We understand this. There was a time in our lives where it was a desperate situation. <laughs> And things didn't look like they could be resolved. It didn't look like it. It could have been a health issue. It could have been a relational issue, uh, a financial issue, whatever it was, you know. But it was something that we were facing. We weren't sure if we could make it through this, you know. But by the grace of God, by the grace of God, He saw us through that. We probably didn't see God working at that time. We probably didn't see it. But he worked in that situation, and that's why we're here today. God is so merciful towards us. He yeah. never gives up on us. Look at this young man. Wasted all his dad's uh, goods and all that money he blew and just threw it all away. And here he's thinking, you know, things are bad, so I'll at least go back and ask my, my dad for a job. He treats his guys good. I'll at least be able to make a decent living, you know. And so he's thinking that. He just wants to eat, you know. I mean, this guy's in bad shape. He just wants to eat and have a roof over his head. But there's a difference here. Because this is a blood relative of the father. He came from his father's seed. There is a connection that has been established at the time of conception, you know. It's established. It can't be separated. So the son's thinking, I'll go back and ask him for a job. But when the father sees him coming, he looks and sees. I don't know how he could tell that was his son. Can you imagine being out in the fields feeding swine and you're thinking about eating what they're eating? You know? <laughs> he had to be in pretty rough shape. Probably hair never been cut in months. You know, <laughs> Scraggly old clothes, you know. It probably looked like a hobo was coming to the plantation or you know. But the dad saw... That it was his son. He knew it was his son. Why did he know? He knew that son would one day come to his senses. Just like we did. He would come to his senses and return home. He knew it. The father was anticipating the son's return. So when he saw him coming, he knew that was his son. And what did he do? Why did you blow all that money? What's the matter with you? you? I worked all these years, and now you're going to throw it all away. No, that's not the way it happened. Now, we get that way sometimes, though. Yeah. <laughs> we, parents, sometimes we get mad about stuff, you know. Why do kids do this? But, you know. but he didn't see it that way. He knew what was going on here. It's a bigger picture. This son of his had humbled himself to come back and face his father. That had to be a tough time. Because he left. On a high horse, right? I mean, he was on top of the world. Going to go make those large investments and bring back a lot of goods and make his dad proud, you know? But here he is, tail between his legs kind of thing, you know, and coming back home and, and he's going to face his father. So he humbly comes to his father, <laughs> trying to tell him I'm sorry kind of thing, you know? And, and the father just can't help himself. He just goes over there and gives him a big old hug and even kissing on him, no matter how bad he smells, you know? The father loves him. There's a connection there. And the son's trying to say, oh, just give me a job. You know, I'll just, I'll just do whatever i got to do. 
And the, the dad right away says, no, no, wait a minute. No, you're my son. And he goes and, and tells the servants to get the family ring. He puts the family ring back on his finger. He goes and they get the, the finest robes and put them on him. He was, being, he was being grafted back into the family in right standing. Just like it was in the very beginning. And see, that's where we're at. We can never be anything else. We're always sons and daughters of God. That's who we are. In the very beginning, God made us to be a part of His family. And that's all we can ever be. And I guarantee you, now that He's home, things are going to be way better than they were out there in the world. Because now He's in a position to enjoy the blessings of His Father. That's God's plan for us. That's God's purpose for us. We don't have to go through life struggle after struggle after struggle when He's there waiting to get involved with us. Now all of us can reflect back on moments in time where things got bad and things looked tough. We need to recognize that that was the time the hand of God was upon us the most. I like to share that story. We don't have the picture of the footsteps in the sand. Anybody seen that picture? Yeah, there's a pair of footsteps in the sand, you know. And then all of a sudden, that, that person's life, you know, some struggles came. And all of a sudden, there's only two footsteps, you know, for one person. And the guy says, well, Lord, that was my toughest time in life. Why did you leave me? <laughs> Jesus looks at him and says, I didn't leave you. I carried you. I carried you through those times. That's why we're here today. God has shown His mercy to us. You know? now, now look at the difference here. Here, we just about blow it in life. God gives us a second chance. He reinstates us. And He puts us right back where we need to be. You know? And even after that, sometimes we get like the brother here. If you continue to read the story, the brother that was faithful to the father that stood there and helped run the family business, you know. He was always faithful. He's there and he sees that his brother came back, he's reinstated into the family, throwing a big old party, and he's all mad. He's mad because this guy wasted his dad's stuff and he was over there living like that. It's terrible. He dragged the family name in the dirt and, you know, he's all mad about it, you know. And, uh, and sometimes we get that way. We start thinking, you know, well, you know, God is good. I, I thank Him for rescuing me and helping me out through all these times, but I think I got this, you know. I think I, I, think I can make this work, you know. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just get in there and, and make it work, you know. And you can. You can. You are so talented. God has planted so much good stuff in you already. You can make things happen. Man. And when you do, God is proud of you. For doing that. Taking the gifts he has given you and moving them forward in life. You know, he's so excited about that and happy for us and proud of us, you know. But guess what? He wants to be involved. He wants to be a part of your life. He wants to uh, be included in your successes in life, you know. And, and look what he does. You know, we can achieve so much. I mean, with our talents, with our abilities, we can make some stuff happen. But there's going to be a limit. You can only get as far as you know how to go. That's it. But with God, with His favor working on your behalf, there are no limitations. None. You can have the greatest life imaginable right here on this earth. Because He wants you to have it. But if we exclude Him, we're restricting ourselves. Can, imagine this for a minute. You're a parent, grandparent, you know, and say you had all the resources of Bill Gates. He's got a lot of money, doesn't he? All kinds of resources. Can you imagine how his kids are living? How his grandkids are living? You know, they're probably very well taken care of and positioned in life for great successes. Huh? And wouldn't you do that for your same kids? Yeah, your grandkids, yeah. And pretty soon maybe... In your future, great grandkids, you know, <laughs> it's a coven. Yeah, 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 you would. 
And can you imagine now being the father of all creation with no limitations whatsoever? Because Bill Gates, his money is limited. Matter of fact, the markets could crash and everything, and it could be nothing <laughs> in a few minutes, you know. But with God, it's unlimited. Don't limit yourself by excluding God from your life. I know sometimes we think, well, I don't want to bother God with this. This is small, this is trivial, I'll just, I'll just handle it. You know? you know, you don't have to. He wants to be there with you to help you handle it. He can give you the wisdom and the insight that you need to even make it a better outcome. So God wants to be involved, you know. He wants to be a, a, a part of everything that's going on. Like this second brother here, you know, he didn't quite get it at first, you know. He's thinking, he's thinking all the negative things, you know. And here, the Father tells him, you've been with me all this time. Everything that I have is yours. Everything. So this brother, he's thinking that, oh, is a God wasted and all that, and all negative, and he didn't realize what his position was. Everything the Father had is available to him. And the same goes for us today. Everything the Father has, and that's a lot, everything is available to us. He wants to share His goodness with us. So try to catch yourself and not put limitations on God in your life. Acknowledge God. You know? And it's, it's real easy. He gave us a prayer that we could pray, and I pray this prayer every morning. Sometimes I can put a lot of meaning into it, you know, and sometimes I do it out of routine. I'm just being honest, you know. I don't always make connection, you know, but I want to be faithful and I want to at least bow my knee to my Father and pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? On earth. Where do we live? On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Everything that comes to us is a gift from God. It's His mercy. It's His grace being poured upon us. Yeah, we're involved. We, we may work with our hands and make certain things happen, but it's His gift to us. Praying that prayer each and every day will help us stay connected with our Father. That's a simple thing He's given us, you know. And then there'll be other times that, well, you're going to get connected and you're going to feel it. You're going to feel His presence. You're going to feel His peace. You're going to feel His love. Everything is going to feel so good, even though on the outside, maybe it don't look so good. Yeah. But inside, it's going to be good when we allow the Father to have that place in our lives. So give Him place. He wants to be a part of your life. He wants to share His goodness and His grace with every one of us. And especially those that are lost today. I know sometimes people say, I'm not lost. I got it going. I'm, I'm in control. Things are okay, you know. But if we don't have Jesus Christ as Lord, we are lost. We are lost. We're going to miss it. We may, we may have a somewhat of a decent life here, you know, like there's a, a big movement in our country here today. It's uh, mostly promoted from a, a liberal perspective. And a lot of people are grabbing a hold of that perspective and, and building a life without God. Uh, they, don't, they don't acknowledge this word right here. You know, the principles that are taught here, they don't acknowledge this. So they're making their own reality and promoting a different type of, uh, of life and lifestyles, you know. And, but they're going to miss it. They may be okay with the life they get, and God gives them that right to choose that life and that path if they want to. God doesn't force anybody to come back home. He doesn't do that for anybody. So he'll allow that to happen. Just like he allows us Christians. He allows us to make our choices. If we want to do that, if we want to choose something outside of his will, we can. You know? But there will be consequences. And mostly negative consequences when we don't use his wisdom. But he wants us to, to decide. Especially those that are lost today. This is an opportunity for, uh, for making things right with the Father. I know it takes humility and it's hard sometimes to, to humble ourselves, you know, and come before our God, but that's what it takes. That's, that's the path. When we recognize that sin is harmful to us and God just wants to get involved to help us resolve it. He wants to help us to fix 
the mistakes and errors we made in life. He wants to do that. It will allow him to. He'll come in today. And he's just a prayer away. All we have to do is come to him. Just like this prodigal son. He came. Maybe he couldn't face his father, but he came humbly into his father's presence. And the father received him. God will receive you today. So pray that prayer tonight before your head hits that pillow. Say, Father, I need to make things right with you. Please help me to correct the error of my ways. Forgive me of my sin. And I do, Father, as much as I know how to do, I'm going to pledge my life to follow your teachings that your son Jesus gave us. That prayer right there will make uh, the difference in our life. That's the connection that we have with our Father. And no one can take that away. I hope you have that connection today. If you don't, seek the Lord while He can be found. Now is the day of salvation. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for this, this uh, scripture here you gave us, this story, Father, this parable that you gave us, Father. It is so important to us to remind us of our lives and, and of all of the struggles that we've been through in life, Father. And, and now we can look back and see it was your hand that was upon us during that time. When things seem so hopeless, you came to the rescue. And Father, for those things, we are eternally grateful. Thank you, Father God, for not giving up on us. And Father, as we pray for this lost and dying world, we pray that your Holy Spirit would reach out and, uh, and touch the hearts and lives of your children so that they can, they can know and recognize that you have a better way in store for every one of us, Father. Father, flood this world with your kindness, with your mercy, and with your love. Use us, Father God, to be your hand extended to this lost and dying world. Father, we love you so much, Father. We look forward to good results. We look forward to the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We look forward to you revealing yourself to this lost and dying world. We say, come Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen. Amen. We are dismissed.